Hello, tubers. This is Pat Jordan coming to you from the Grain Ghetto in Illinois. I promised to tell you a secret about two vitamins. I have 15 books with the most advanced, insightful information you will find anywhere in the world, so I tend to guard the really big ideas as a matter of trying to keep food on the table and the lights on. However, since I have been on the alternative media circuit since 2008, I've been putting out information that I consider critical to preventing people from harming themselves due to medical experts, alternative medicine experts, self-styled gurus, and your basic everyday moron putting out advice that they have no business talking about. I will emphasize every time I did not graduate college. I despise higher education. I can read. James Burke said that if you can read, you can teach yourself anything. There is a principle in what is called the judicial system where a witness is induced to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You won't find that where folks are stupid, evil, or greedy. Did I just repeat myself? So to begin with the topic of vitamin C, as I have mentioned many times and will repeat again until either you are ready for the nut hutch or start repeating it back to me. In the seafaring days, they used to be able to cure scurvy with a small amount of lemons, limes, or sauerkraut. The amount used to do this was in the milligrams. In these post-lying-to-us-polling days, people are mainlining vitamin C yet barely able to stay alive. My purpose is to force you to ask why. We only have to look at Kalokirinos, who taught us about autoimmune scurvy from, wait for it, vaccines to tell us where this epidemic of frank and subclinical scurvy came from. Nope, I'm sorry, I don't think I can open a single topic that doesn't have the serpent swallowing its syringe-shaped tail. Say that one five times fast. So we're messed up. And it seems that we need more and more vitamin C. Back in the day, they threw a bit of lab-grade ascorbate at it, and the herd animals went back to business as usual. Over time, the old magics weren't working anymore, so they started changing the formula. Ascorbyl palmitate was sold as a liposomal nutraceutical to better deliver the payload. Modern analysis shows that the palmitic acid simply ionizes off, leaving the ascorbate to circulate in the blood longer because that is what fat does to blood components. It looks good on an industry test. Look, we increased the dwell time of vitamin C in circulation. But we're stuck with that tooth, the whole tooth, and nothing but a tooth thing. Because what they didn't say is that the elevated palmitic acid actually can get into tissue and be converted to a toxic product under certain conditions. Plus, the ascorbate circulating in the blood means that it didn't get to where it was supposed to be going. No one but me, it seems, has taken up the theme that our chaperone and transport proteins in the blood and cells have been so damaged from vaccines that simple molecules can't even get to their destination. If you want to know how vitamin C gets into cells, then you will have to wait for a mind-blowing book that I'm writing with the selfless help of one of my little red hands. Once you learn that little secret, then thou might shitteth thy pants once thou consider that things hast gotten so bad that folks were making their own liposomal vitamin C to trick it into their cells. Since vitamin C was, is, and remains a water-soluble vitamin, it bends the mind to think that some dumbass guru, instead of calling out to the world that we are all suffering from vaccine-induced autoimmune scurvy, instead scurries to the cash bucket of pushing fat-encrusted ascorbates. Why? 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 There hasn't been any long-term studies to show if the vitamin C that was tricked past the normal cellular processes to get it inside the cell 
if the vitamin C might not act like an acid to burn the cellular machinery on the way to improving the thing that it was initially sought for. I've seen things like that repeated over and over again. A therapy designed for one thing, like the use of antioxidants, takes out the thyroid function. Oh, didn't know that either? Sorry, that comes with the price of my books. But I haven't gotten to the point of this video, and it isn't because I work for American Idol and I like to create tension before the commercial break. This inability to feed the cells a simple molecule with a simple delivery system pushed the ignorant consumers to increase their daily limit that really should not have exceeded more than 250 milligrams per day to them consuming grams in the range that can etch your teeth and burn your stomach. Here's the secret. If you take vitamin C, or what is called vitamin B6, at high doses for too long, your body will do what is called upregulation. This means that if you took 2 grams per day, every day, then as soon as you fall below that 2 gram level, you will exhibit the signs of scurvy. The set point was raised over time. Your body now thinks that the higher level is the minimum amount needed to survive, so it will require that or more. What does this mean to folks who, for whatever reason, forgets to take their dose, becomes disinterested in taking supplements, or runs out of money? You must wean yourself slowly over months to a reasonable level in order to reset the set point so that you can down-regulate your need for something artificial. Artificial? You don't see ascorbate crystals growing on trees, do you? At 70 milligrams per lemon, you would have to consume 28.57 lemons per day to provide 2 grams of vitamin C. At least you would get calcium supplementation from your dissolved teeth. People have gone out to Harbor Freight Tools to get industrial ultrasonic cleaners to follow a recipe for making liposomal vitamin C at home because they were too cheap to waste their money to pay for someone else to make it. In the autopsy on stupid, we have to ask if the stainless steel in a cheap-ass parts cleaner was food grade. We have to ask if the acidic environment of ascorbic acid and fatty acids wouldn't leach nickel and chromium from the cheap steel. We have to ask that once you made your little fatty globules of joy, what is the science that you are so convinced is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to support your mad rush to your hardware store? I keep bringing up monkey see, monkey do, but I can't come to terms with folks that seem to be well-meaning seekers of the truth that get steered so far off course by internet gurus that they end up like monkeys in the jungle crapping in their own hands and then throwing poo at you when you try to show them their folly. It was Carl Pfeiffer of Mental and Elemental Nutrition who said that vitamins are synthetic stopgaps to get you over a nutritional defect. Once they have done their job, they should be discontinued. Why is it that people are now addicted to synthetic vitamins for life? <laughs>